Oh hi, this is Jessica Lyon, Project Manager of the Phoenix Firestorm Project, and this tutorial covers the customizability option to the Quick Preferences panel new in version 4.4.0. Quick Preferences is not a new feature, in fact it's been around for quite a long time. The purpose was to give users a single panel with a short list of frequently accessed preference options so that they can change things quickly without having to sort through the main preferences panel. The problem, of course, with this is that the options that one user changes frequently are not necessarily the same as the options another user changes frequently. So we've always had requests from people to add this and that to the Quick Preferences panel. What we've done instead is provide user customizability of the Quick Preferences panel, which gives you the power to customize it yourself. Unfortunately, however, this process is quite technical and we really only recommend it for advanced users. Uh, in fact, I can guarantee even advanced users are going to screw things up from time to time, but I'm hoping that this tutorial will help um, clear things up and perhaps prevent you from any kind of disastrous effects. So let's get started. The Quick Preferences can be accessed from a button that looks just like this. This is the logo of the Phoenix Firestorm project. And if this button is not visible to you on your toolbars, you can access it by clicking on the Avatar menu at the top. Go down to Toolbar Buttons. And in this panel, you'll see over here is a Quick Preferences uh, option and you can click and drag. In my case, it's grayed out because I already have the button visible. But you can click and drag it onto one of your toolbars on the right, the bottom, or the left side of your screen. Now I'm going to assume that you have that button available now and we click it. When you first look at it, at first glance it doesn't look any different from the original Quick Preferences and in fact it isn't any different except for one minor change. Down here at the bottom right hand corner is a new button with a little wrench on it and when you click on that the new changes become available and visible and you can see how you can customize things. But before we go any further, you must first learn a little bit about debug settings. Every preference option you see, let me just open preferences, every preference option that you see in preferences has a corresponding identifier that the viewer code reads when you change something. These are called debug settings, and since they are designed primarily for the viewer code, they aren't always human readable. Perhaps the biggest challenge you're going to face with custom Quick Preferences is finding the correct debug settings associated with the preference option you want to add. Some are easy and some are not. Let's start by opening up the debug settings list for you to have a look at. So in order to access that, that's in your advanced and if you don't have the advanced menu available, you can get to it from preferences, click on advanced and there's an option right here that says show advanced menu. Make sure that's checked. And from the advanced menu, you can scroll down here and you will see a show debug settings option. So we'll just click on that. And here we go. This, these are debug settings. And as you can see, they are plentiful. And as you scroll down, you can see they're not all human readable. Um, like UISND footsteps. What is that? Well, some of them on the right hand side, most of them, I think, have descriptors. Um, but even those descriptors can be a little bit confusing. What's important to know though is that when you add a debug option or when you add a new option to your quick preferences, it is a preference from the preferences panel. So let me show you how you do that. Let me open up preferences. Now we've, you're going to want to have all three of these windows open because first of all, the first step is to find what preference option you want to have in your Quick Preferences. So let's say we're just scrolling through here and uh, let me say, what about this one? Play typing animation when chatting. That's something I probably wouldn't want to turn on or off, but somebody might. It's, it makes a good example, so let's just use that as an example. So play typing animation when chatting. First thing we got to do is find the debug setting for that. It's not always obvious, but let me think. Now we have a search item right here and you got to come up try to think of a keyword so play typing animation when chatting typing would probably be a pretty good keyword so let's try that typing so here are the debug settings that have typing in the in the name the U I S N D that stands for user interface sound by the way um, but here we are here play typing animation 
play typing animation. Your avatar plays a typing animation whenever you type in the chat bar. That sounds like it. Now, here is the on and off option for that. Now, to make sure that you have the correct debug setting, click it and pay attention to what happens in your preferences panel. Just watch over here as I click this from false to true. You see it's turning on and off? So now I know for sure that I have the correct debug setting for that preference option. And that debug setting is called play typing anim, all one word. So now let's say I want to add that to my quick preferences. So now we're focused on the quick preferences panel and I'm going to click on the tool. And this is the new stuff right in here, as well as these trash cans, which lets you eliminate items that you don't want anymore. Um, but the plus sign lets me add a new one. So I'm going to add a new one and then I have to give it a name. So let me call this play typing animation. Makes sense. And now you've got to choose the debug and you click on this and there's this great big long crazy list, but we know what it's called. It's called play typing anim. So let's just search down here to P play and this is all alphabetic. So we got to go to play typing play. There it is. Play typing animation. I've clicked it and it's got a radio button, which is what it should have. And you can get a preview on here and what it's going to look like. And if that's how you want it, that's what you want it called. That that's cut off a little bit. It's a little bit too long. I don't need it to say animation forward. Just anim works for me and just click close. And there it is. And now when I change it on and off, pay attention over here in the preference panel, you'll see that it changes on and off. And so now, we've just added our first custom quick preferences panel feature. Now what about something else? What about if it had a slider? What about if it was one of these? This is the floater window opacity for inactive and active windows. So let's say I wanted to make a debug setting for inactive panels, for example. First, we've got to find the debug for it. So let's go into search for that. Let's clear this search term. And so what might be a good keyword? Opacity, maybe? Let's search for that. Uh, While well, there's quite a bit of results here for opacity, and I'm just looking through here, grid opacity, pathfinding, picker context opacity, pie menu opacity, that's useful to know. Uh, select highlight alpha, hmm, I don't see it in here. So that's probably not a good keyword. What else could we search for? What about uh, floater window, uh, floating window? Those are probably pretty common. You'll get a lot of results. Let me just try that quickly. Window. Yeah, crazy amount of results. Let's try um, floater or floating. Nothing. Okay. Let's try. What about this? What about inactive? Because that's the one I want to change. Let's try inactive. There it is. Inactive floater transparency. You can see it right here. Transparency of inactive floaters, floaters that have no focus. So I'm pretty sure that's the one. I just want to make sure. Here's your value. In this case, it's a slider, so it's it's not radio buttons. Um, let me just adjust this and see what happens. And there we go. This is being affected by that, and that is affecting it in the debug. So I know that I have the correct setting here. Oops. Let me go back to full one. Okay, so we know the name. Inactive floater transparency. So I want to add this to my quick preferences panel. I'm going to click the little wrench down here. I'm going to click the plus sign. I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call it window transparency. I'm do trans, window trans, that works. Okay, now I've got to find the debug, so i got to click on the choose. And i got to go down to I. went too far. There are a lot of debug options. And so this is inactive floater transparency is what I'm looking for. So inactive, where are we? Inactive floater transparency. There it is right there. And it's got a slider and this gives me a preview of what it's going to look like. And I can adjust this just to make sure I got the right one. And I do. And I can click the 
X here, which saves it, and now it's saved. And now I have plate typing animation. Oops, what's going on there? There we go. And I've got window transparency option. And you can go in now, remember that every preference option in here has a corresponding debug setting next to it. What about auto response? Auto response is something that I frequently I use a lot, um, but it'd be nice to be able to turn it off sometimes. So let's try to find auto response in here. So um, keyword, good keyword to search for auto response. No. Nope. What about auto respond? Ah, auto respond mode. Here we go. Firestorm FS auto respond mode has the user selected auto respond mode. True or false? I'm pretty sure that's the one. In fact, I'm quite sure. So now I'm going to add that. So again, I click my wrench here in Quick Preferences panel. And I give it a, oops, click the plus to create a new one. And I'll give it a name. Auto response. And this is on, off. So now I've got to find the debug from here, which is FS auto respond mode. So I click on here. And uh, if you just click the F, by the way, um, it'll jump you down to the F. So FS, and then it's auto, so FS audio auto respond mode. There it is right there. It's a radio button, gives me an on and off. And there's the options right here. And that's it for me. So I'm going to click OK. And there we go. Now I have auto response on and off. And I'm going to have that on because people, I am me quite often when I'm busy doing things like tutorial videos. And, uh, and I don't want them to think I'm being rude and ignoring them. So I leave my auto response on quite frequently. Now let's say I screwed something up. Or let's say I don't want one of these anymore. So let me say I decided, I changed my mind, I don't want this window transparency one, because I, I never use it, I never need that really. So I can go like this and I'll want to set it back to default and I'll go to here. And now I've got these little trash bins here and I can just click on trash bin and poof, it is gone, just like that. What if I screwed up and I can pretty much assure you you're going to screw up at some point because debug settings um, are very sensitive and confusing and sometimes we'll pick the wrong debug setting. It's very important to make sure that you've got the right setting corresponding to the preference that you're trying to play with. If you screwed up, there is a reset button down here and if you click that reset button, it wipes everything back to factory defaults, which is the settings that we shipped you with and the quick preference options that we shipped with. Um, and that is pretty much it. It's, it's not trivial, it's not rudimentary, it's not necessarily a simple feature to play with. However, if you do manage to get it working, um, it's extremely useful and gives Firestorm even further customizability and gives you customizability of what quick preferences options you have available when you want them. And I hope this tutorial is going to help you guide you through how setting these things up, how to set these things up, and um, hope to see you in the next video. Psst. Are you still there? Because I forgot to show you something. Let me show you. Let me go back and open Quick Preferences, and something that somebody just pointed out to me, which I realized I forgot, is how come this slider lets you go above? It shouldn't go above full transparency. Why is that? Let me just go back to preferences. Let me go back to here and let me just go back and open up the debug settings and we'll find that was inactive. Floater transparency. The value shouldn't go more than one for this particular item. And you can tell this by the slider here. As I slide it down to zero, and then slide it all the way back up to full on the slider, it stops at one, you see? So why is it that this goes higher? Well, unfortunately it's not a brilliant 
system that understands um, all the limitations of the debug options. And sometimes you have to decide what it should be. Now, because we know by adjusting this that the maximum is one, let me go back in here, click on this tool, and edit this floater opacity by clicking it, and it comes back into effect. I forgot to show you this stuff here. Minimum, maximum, and increments. Maximum is listed here at 2.200, and it shouldn't be. We know it should be 1.00, that's the maximum. So I'm gonna type that 1.00, hit enter, and that fixes that little bug because it shouldn't go above one and it, even if it does it's not going to affect anything badly it just doesn't make any difference past one and this is also true for some other settings that you'll come across and that's why this is here in fact and sometimes also you'll choose a, uh, a preference with the debug that isn't rec properly recognized in here um, so there are things that are text fields and you can enter the text field here. There are some options that use a spinner. Let me see if I can find one of those. For example, here's some spinners. And a spinner is just a, a little up and down arrow that can change things here. Um, some of them will be sliders, which are like these here. And some of them will be radio buttons, which are these. Now, if I chose a radio button for floato, floater opacity, it's it's just not going to work. Or will it? Oh, well, that's an interesting bug. <laughs> cool. See what you find out? Okay, so it gives you an idea, though, um, of how things go and how to correct things when you do come across the little bug. Hope that helps. See you later.